Hello, this is Joe Neville, and in this video I'm going to be looking at Python functions, which are extremely useful when writing Python scripts, especially if you want to avoid repeating yourself. If you've watched any videos in this series, you'll be forgiven for thinking that the code is very basic. That's partly because I'm a relative novice, but partly on purpose. I wanted to try to make the examples as easy as possible to follow. Thus, they look like this script on the right with no functions. When we run this script, the code is processed from the top down and the order is important. To illustrate that further, let's dive into some code. Here we have a simple hello world script. So what I'm doing is I'm declaring the object of A with a string hello world and then printing it to the screen. Then I've tried to print B before I've declared the string here. So what will happen when we run this? Let's jump over to the console. Don't forget Python 3. Okay, if we run that, we get hello world, but we get a name error because B has not been defined before we've called it to print. The order's important, it works top down. Okay, so to fix that, if we cut this statement, put it below, I'll save that, run it again, what do we get? Hello world, hello moon. Perfect. Without functions, our Python scripts are like reading a novel. Start at page one and work your way through until the end. Well, if that's the case, then functions are like those fighting fantasy or choose your own adventure books that were popular in the 80s. The story is divided up into numbered chunks and the readers jumps from section to section depending on decisions that they make, i.e. there's no set order. So what are functions? Functions are snippets of code and a well-designed function will have an input of data which is then acted upon in the body of the function and then it will return some data. Another great thing about functions is that they can be reused, hence my comment earlier about not having to repeat ourselves and we call them to activate them. Okay, let's jump into the code and compose a function. Now functions all start with the three letters D E F for define, then it's the function title. I'm just going to give this the title of print me. Then we have parentheses. Now these can be empty or you can define that some data needs to be fed into the function. And what you do, you'd put the item in there. So I'm going to say that we need to have an item of data, it's just a placeholder of X that needs to be fed into the function. I'm going to do a simple string that will print to the screen and then we'll print out whatever X is fed into the function. I'll save that. If I go to jump over to the console to run that, so I'm running this file sample underscore function that contains the function, we run that, nothing happens, okay? That's because we haven't called the function yet. So the function's defined in the script, but it's not actually active. So to call the function, we type its name, and then parentheses. Now watch what happens if I, I'll save that, if I run this now, now that I've called it we get an error. That's because, as you can see, there's a type error. Print me is missing one required positional argument of x. That's because there, in the parentheses, I've said we need some data, which is the part that's going to be um, printed out, the data of x. But when I called it, I didn't feed any data in. So what to correct that, let's put in 42. Save it, jump back over to the console, and there we go, print. My data is 42. Okay, great. Now let's take a look at another script and try to improve it by adding a function. Here's a simple script that I've got called adder.py. Here I'm declaring an object of A, which is 5, and then B, that's 10, and I'm just doing a print to the screen. So I'm doing print A plus B is, and it's the sum of A and B. 
Now let's run that. Okay, so printed to the screen we have 5 plus 10 is 15. Good. Now what if we wanted to run that again but with a different number for A? So we wanted to include the original sum um, but add an extra sum in there. I'll put in A equals 7. Now the thing is, if you save and run that again, you see that nothing actually happens. So the script is not going to loop back around to print it again, even though we've put a new variable in for A. So what we would have to do is bring our print down below, save that, run it again. Okay, so that's how we get the second sum appearing on the screen. What if we wanted to do something along the lines of As you can see, rather repetitive. So how can we improve this with a function? Okay, DEF to define the function. And I'm going to call this sum. And in the parentheses, I'm going to state that two arguments are required. So, what two arguments? A and B, of course. Don't forget the colon. And remember that the code needs to be part of the body of the function. So, we need the four spaces. Okay, now the print statement is part of our function. Now, the thing is, we don't need to declare them up there. Remember, what we can do is we can feed in A and B when we call the function. So, 5 will be A and 10 will be B. Save that. Run it. There you go. 5 plus 10 is 15. Now, the great thing is, if we wanted to carry on with this, we can just call different numbers. We can feed in different numbers when we're calling the function. So, you can see how much more efficient, rather than having to constantly add in the print statements, we can just call the function with the different variables. Here on screen we have one of the scripts I used in the first video for any CLI. What we have here is we have some globally defined variables and then we have some operations. So what we have is we have the login, we're grabbing the cookie, we feed the cookie into the header and we're sending a CLI um, and then printing that out to the screen. Now one of the things with the actions that you're going to take when you're interrogating a REST API like this, sending the different calls, is that these are obvious candidates to lump together into different functions, which you can then define once and repeatedly call. And grouping logical actions such as the login and then sending a command and the logout together can actually make the code a lot easier to read. And as they say on TV, here's one I prepared earlier. Here's a Python script that uses three functions to group together the logical actions that you'll be performing when you interrogate a REST API. So first of all, I'll step you through what we're doing in this script. We've got our imports up here of requests and JSON. Then our first function, so DEF to define the function and the name is login, which is of course logging into an Aruba switch. So we have this login sessions and then we create the cookie. So when we run this login, we will pass in the credentials, etc., grab the cookie, and the function will return that dictionary so that other functions can use it. Next up, we have the 
function of get serial because what I want to do here is as I'm sending a get to this URL system forward slash status and you can see there that in the parentheses I've got an argument of C that I require and C will be used in the header. C is essentially going to be the cookie that's passed from login returned there and is going to be used by get underscore serial in the header there. We've got some error checking and if everything's good we're going to print the name of the device and the serial to the screen. Finally I've got my logout which will end the session by using again C. So you can see that argument there that we need C and that's used in the header. Some error checking if not we'll just return the end session status code. Further down what I have is I've got my global variables, a URL and my credentials. And here we have the part where we call the function. Notice that I've defined the functions above the global variables so these credentials are actually used by the function login up here but the order is not important for where you define the function to where you put the global variables as long as they're in there before the function is called it will run correctly so what I've done here is I am calling the function but what I do is I create this object of C when I do the login and that will be the cookie which can then be passed into the subsequent functions okay but first of all what I'll do is I'll run this first part where we just do the login and I will print that to the screen so you can see that it's actually the dictionary containing the cookie Okay, so it's Python 3 serial hyphen func dot pi. Let's run that. Okay, now there you can see that's my dictionary. There's the cookie header and there's the session ID. So that's what's being created at this point. Okay, now stepping further, once we've got the cookie which will be created here in this uh, Python object of C, I can feed that data into my get underscore serial and then that's going to be used in the header there and for the logout. Okay, so let's get rid of that print statement, save that, run it again. Okay, great. So that is our three functions working together to grab the information from the switch. So I'm essentially the the heart of the um, script is this get serial and I'm printing that to the screen so I've got serial sorry switch one and the serial number there I've got a couple of switches underneath my desk as I speak and that's what we've logged into and grabbed that information so if we want to take that a step further and log into a couple of devices there's different ways to do this but just to re-emphasize the fact that we can just call the functions again what I have done is I've just defined the URL again and run my f functions as you can see as I say this isn't the most efficient way to do it I am aware of that but I just wanted to show you that what you can do with these functions to drill this home is that you can declare your functions, declare your global variables, so you've got your IP address there, call your functions, then we that will print to the screen here, then we can feed in a different global variable for the URL, so a different IP address, see we're going for dot two rather than dot one there in the fourth octet, and run our functions again, so we'll call these functions again to log into this dot two device, um, print the serial number and the name to the screen and then we will log out so much more efficient than w when we're not using functions and we would have to include all of these steps again in the script to do for a different IP address side note I know that we could use a, a for loop but that's for another video okay so let's just focus on functions right now and let's run this again for both of the switches and there we are. 
SW1 with the serial number and SW2 with the serial number. Okay, so I hope that gave you some useful insight into Python functions, a powerful way to combine logical actions within your scripts so that you don't have to repeat yourself. You can make your code that much more concise and that much more readable. I'll post the scripts up on GitHub and put the link in the description. And I'll be back soon with some more Python videos. But for now, my name's Joe Neville. Thanks for watching and goodbye.